Welcome to Vail United Methodist Church Online. This is our weekly sermon from Pastor Jeff Haw. Welcome. This is our sermon for November 3rd of 2019. We're celebrating All Saints Sunday. Uh, the sermon title is Our Inheritance. What, what does it mean to be a saint? And what does, what does that mean to us in the way we live? Let's take a look. Our scripture is from Ephesians chapter 1, verses 11 through 23, the common, from the Common English Bible. Hear now the Holy Scripture. We have also received an inheritance in Christ. We were destined by the plan of God, who accomplishes everything according to his design. We are called to be an honor to God's glory, because we were the first to hope in Christ. You too heard the word of truth in Christ, which is the good news of your salvation. You were sealed with the promise of the Holy Spirit because you believed in Christ. The Holy Spirit is the down payment on our inheritance, which is applied toward our redemption as God's own people, resulting in the honor of God's glory. Since I heard about your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all God's people, this is the reason that I don't stop giving thanks to God for you when I remember you in my prayers. I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, will give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation that makes God known to you. I pray that the eyes of your heart will have enough light to see what is the hope of God's call, what is the richness of God's glorious inheritance among believers, and what is the overwhelming greatness of God's power that is working among us believers. This power is confirmed by the energy of God's powerful strength. God's power was at work in Christ when God raised him from the dead and sat him at God's right hand in the heavens, far above every ruler and authority and power and angelic power, any power that might be named, not only now, but in the future. God put everything under Christ's feet and made him head of everything in the church, which is his body. His body, the church, is the fullness of Christ, who fills everything in every way. Thanks be to God for the gift of Holy Scripture. Amen. Today we are celebrating All Saints Sunday, and, and I love I love the stories of the ancient saints. They're, they're, they're wonderful. I, uh, one of my favorite is the stories of uh, Perpetua and Felicity. These were uh, two young women who, um, around the year 200, uh, 203 I think, um, were arrested under the persecution of uh, Septimus uh, Severus. And um, Perpetua had, had money uh, from a wealthy family. She had a, a young baby in arms. Um, Felicity was, 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 was pregnant, and they were arrested anyway, along with, with many others. They were not actually uh, members of the church yet. They, had, uh, they were catechumens. They were studying. And um, so they were put under house arrest. Actually, they were baptized while they were under house arrest, and then sentenced to be executed. And their story of their faith is so powerful, and, and, and per, Perpetua left a, uh, a, a journal of, of, of her, 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 uh, her, her time and her reflections, and, and her joy in serving God in, in, as a witness um, to her faith. Um, and, and again, I, Perpetua and Felicity, just, just look them up sometime and, and, and read about them. It's a great story. Probably one of the most famous saints would be St. Francis, or, you know, uh, certainly one of them. Um, he was the, the patron saint of animals, among other things. And, and there are a lot of, of, of patron saints for different things. <laughs> Did you know there's a patron saint of the Internet? Now, you might think that was somebody who, you know, built the first webpage for the Vatican or, 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 or something like that, but actually not. It's St. It's Isidore of Spain. He lived in the 6th and 7th century, so, you know, <laughs> for a millennium ago. He came from an apparently holy family. There were, there were three of his siblings that were also uh, canonized as, as saints. But I, I, well, when he was a child, his older brother used to lock him in his room because he said he was, he was, uh, he was, he was lazy. And uh, St. Isidore, uh, studied and learned, and, and he wanted to learn more about things, uh, the outside world mostly. And, and later in life, he compiled an index of over a thousand manuscripts. And some people said that was really the first search engine. And so he is now the patron saint of the internet. Well, how does one become a saint? 
Well, in, in the Catholic Church, it's a very strict process. It's very rigorous, uh, formalized process. And there are you can you can you can be you can be uh, canonized as a saint. You might just be beatified um, and considered a saint, kind of locally. It's kind of weird. Um, and, and, and in this process, there is a person uh, whose title is defender of the faith, but 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 really, in some of those are known as the devil's advocate, because their role is to say why this person should not be a saint. This process takes takes years, and and, and part of the uh, the process is is documentation that this person has done at least two miracles. Now, we Protestants don't follow that. We, we, we look at Paul's writings, uh, especially in the, New in, in the New Testament entirely, um, that, that always refers to saints in the plural. And usually, usually to, to, to specific living people. Saints literally means holy ones. And, and holy simply means set apart. Set apart for God's purposes. Not some distant, ethereal uh, beings that, 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 that we, can, uh, we can think look down on us and, and can guide us, but, but living and active and present in the kingdom of God. And we are saints. You and me. Believers in Christ. Saints in this world. Now, being a saint does not give you a, 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 an ID card with, with privileges. You can't go around bragging that, that oh, I'm a saint. I, you know, there's a great story of um, Massachusetts Governor Christian Herter, and he was, he was out campaigning, and it was a you know, just long day. He, he, had, he, had, he had missed lunch, and, and, and he got to a, a, a church barbecue for dinner. And, and he was harried and hungry, and, 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 and he went through the line, and, and there was a woman there handing out, you know, pieces of barbecue chicken, and, 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 and she was giving everybody one. And she gave him one, and, and he said, um, could I have another one? And he was, he was a fairly humble person, but, but he was hungry. And so, so he said, you know, can I have, a, have another one? She goes, no, everybody only gets one. He said, well, I'm, I'm really, really hungry. And, no, everybody gets one. Do you know who I am? I'm, I'm, I'm the governor of your state. And she said, Do you know who I am? I'm the lady in charge of the chicken. Take one. Being a saint is a calling to a responsibility. To a responsibility in the kingdom of God. Blaise Pascal uh, prayed this prayer. I ask you neither for health, nor for sickness, for life, nor for death, but that you may dispose of my health and my sickness, my life and my death for your glory. Wow. That's similar to John Wesley's covenant prayer that, that we also know, but, but he's not the only one. And, and we are called to live that way for the glory of God living and active and alive. Not in the world, but not a part of the world. Separate in a sense. It, I, I, it's like a submarine. Think about that. You know, a submarine is, is, is made out of, out of metal, but it, it is in the water. And it, it functions, and it functions very well in the water. They, they don't function well on the surface. They certainly don't operate on dry land. But if the water gets in the submarine, that's not good. In the world, not of it. We are called to be God's holy people living that way. There was a uh, Christian uh, baroness in um, Kenya, and she had hired this young, young boy as, as a servant. And she treated him like she did all of her other servants, with probably a bit of airs and, and superiority. But but he, he he worked he worked he worked well for her. And after three months, he told her she was he was he was he was, he was quitting his job. And, and she was shocked. She was like, "Well, don't 
you, uh, you know, what do you need? I'll, I'll, I'll pay you more if, if, to keep you. And he said, no, no, you see, see, I'm trying to decide if I want to be a Christian or a Muslim. So I decided to hire myself out to get to know these, uh, a Christian family and a Muslim family to see, you know, to see how they lived. So I could choose which way to go. She thought back of all the ways she treated him and said, I wish you told me that in the first place. Wow. It's not saintly living. Being a saint it has to come down to our core being. But we are surrounded by this great cloud of witnesses, these other saints among us, to lead us and to guide us. We need the church to teach us how to be a saint. And sometimes that calls us to great things. Not that we can train for them, but we can be there and respond when circumstances happen. Back in 1984, former Marine Sergeant Riley uh, Arano was, was, was serving a 25-year prison sentence for murder. He and, and, and four others escaped. Uh, he split up from the others and, and somehow acquired a gun. And he, and he invaded the home of Nathan and Louise uh, de Grenefeed. And, and he pointed her, his gun at them, and, and Louise looked at him and said, Young man, I'm a Christian lady, and, and I don't believe in no violence. Put that gun down, and you sit down. And, he, and, and, and she asked him how he was. He said, Well, I was hungry. So she said, Okay, I'll get up. And she started to prepare breakfast. And she, she sent her husband to go get him some dry socks because his feet were wet. And she fed him. And they, 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 as they sat down to eat, they, they offered a prayer. And she, she, she prayed for, 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 uh, for Riley and, and, and gave God thanks that he was safe. And they talked. And, and he began to tell her about his life and, and how he, uh, she, he reminded her, he reminded she reminded him of his grandmother who had since passed. He said, you know, now that she's gone, there's, there's nobody that loves me. And she says, I love you, and God loves you. Well, after a while, the police showed up. They were uh, uh, contacted by a neighbor who, who, who thought they'd saw, seen something, and, and, and Riley thought he was going to get killed by the police. But Louis said, I'll take care of this. And, and, and she went outside to, to talk to the police. She said, listen, I, I don't believe in violence, but you, you put your guns down and, and you come in and you can talk to him. Well, I, I think they were a little hesitant, but, but she finally won them over. And, 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 and Riley surrendered himself. And he went back to prison. They had some time on for his escape. But, but, but Louise and Nathan refused to press charges. They said, he hasn't done us any harm. And they began to correspond with him and even visiting him in prison. And, and he got out and they stayed in touch. And, and, and when Louise died, he, he came to her funeral and he spoke. And he said that she was real Christianity. He had a job and he got married and had a son. He became a Christian because of her faith her willingness to share God's love with this man who was threatening her life. Wow. We've, we've been talking about reckless, reckless love and, 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 and this living not, not in the world, not of the world. Seeing beyond the immediate and knowing God's love and living as saints. May, may, may we do that. And as Paul says, may we, may we live so that the eyes of our hearts will have enough light to see what is the hope of God's will. What is the richness of God's glorious inheritance among believers? And what is the overwhelming greatness of God's power that is working among us believers? We give God our thanks and our praise. Will you pray with me? Lord, teach us your will. Nothing more, nothing less, nothing else. 